I'm Miranda Russell of Russell Orchards. My husband Doug and I own the farm and the property and the business which we took over from his dad, Max Russell, who had farmed here for 30 years. We have wines that sort of follow the season, so we start picking strawberries in June and we can make wine from that and we do and we have cherries that follow that and it just goes right through the summer with raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, elderberries, josta berries, currants, through the stone fruits, the peaches, the pears and then all the apple wines and varieties that we make with that. We're here in the blackberry fields and uh, this is the time of year when we do our blackberry harvest. We sell a lot of our blackberries at retail in the store, but we also use a lot of them in our wine production. And the blackberries that we're picking today and over the next couple of weeks, we'll put into fermentation in a cold filtered process and we'll be ready to bottle that blackberry wine in sometime within the next six months. We also make a perry here with our pears, which is a hard pear drink that's made from pears the way that a hard cider is made from apples and we also make a pear wine which is really delicious. These pears here uh, will be ripe sometime in September and October at which point they'll be pressed on our cider press and started into fermentation and we'll finish that process the following season. Well let's head into the tasting room and in the tasting room we can try probably four or five varieties of wine and any given weekend, if you stop by, you can try the wines that we're sampling that day. We try to have a nice variety of different wines and hard ciders available for people to try so that if you come every weekend, you might be able to try them all over the course of the year. <laughs> well, we're here in our tasting room at uh, the barn at Russell Orchards, and here's where we store and sell some of our wines from. We have them at room temperature, and they're all over this room, and we also have them chilled in our refrigerator because a lot of people decide that they like it so much they need to try it tonight, have it with dinner. Um, some of the wines that you'll see behind me here are, uh, are very popular fruit wines and our hard ciders are here. We have a unique uh, rhubarb wine which is really nice chilled. Uh, it's great served with um, something like a poached fish. Um, people have said it uh, reminds them of a Riesling so this is a really nice one to try if you're brave. Uh, among the other unique fruit wines technically not a fruit, more like a weed, is the dandelion wine. This is a wine that people often like to try just for the novelty of it to say, oh, I've tried dandelion wine, and then they wind up liking it. Uh, we consider this wine to be more of a digestif or uh, an aperitif, but if you consider all the healthful properties that are in the dandelions, um, it, they do translate into the wine, and it is nice to have after dinner and after dessert, but I like to tell people when they buy this wine, you don't have to drink the whole thing. Of all the wines and hard ciders that we make here at Russell Orchards, I would say that the sweet hard cider and the dry hard cider are the most popular in the hard ciders. Uh, we sell, bar none, the most of our, the wines and hard ciders that we sell are those two, followed closely by a strawberry rhubarb wine and the raspberry peach wine. And I think it's nice that people are not too feeling too strict about the way that they have to view drinking wine or drinking hard cider. We try to make it something that's more approachable for people and certainly if they wanted to blend something that we haven't blended, they could buy two different bottles and just try a blend on their own. And Our winery is a real destination and has become very popular here on the North Shore. We have 24 varieties of fruit wines and hard ciders. We're open every day from May through November and our tasting room is open for tastings every weekend from 12 to 5. So please come on down and see us. Hi, I'm Rich Pelletier. I'm one of the owners of Neshoba Valley Winery. Uh, I've been with the winery since 1995. We have a bunch of uh, different offerings out here, but uh, our primary focus still remains fruit wines, where we have probably about uh, 22 different um, varieties of fruit wines and probably about eight different varieties of grape wines. In the late 90s, we actually started planting and playing around with some of the grape varietals that we can actually grow out here uh, on the East Coast. Uh, one of my favorite wines and the ones to this day from in the very first grape uh, planting that we did was Vignol. Um, and we actually do Vignol 
uh, as our first estate uh, grape wine, and it's uh, produced dry. Well, a lot of wineries use Vignol uh, in an off-dry or sweet uh, style. We actually produce it here with 0% residual sugar, um, and I think it's uh, a great. It has lush pineapples and apricot taste to it. So uh, it's actually one of, it has become one of our better grape uh, wine varietals that we sell. This is our um, barrel room. Um, so this gives us a great um, temperature, humidity control area where we have roughly about 160 barrels. Uh, we have a, quite a variety of barrel, barrels and we do experiment a lot between uh, French oak, Eastern European oak, and we do a lot with uh, three-year toasted American uh, barrels uh, made by uh, Canton Cooperage. Uh, one of the great things about uh, what we offer here at Neshoba Valley Winery is that we, it's a great day to come out and just relax, um, pull up a picnic table or a table that we have on one of our um, front porches, various porches all over the place, but uh, many people come out here. We have a picnic lunch program. We have a lot of food actually and some great vendors in the wine shop that you can come out and and purchase uh, Stonewall Kitchen products or uh, private label products. Um, and then we also have, we can go online and order a picnic for a day. And when you show up, the picnic's ready for you. You can take it out, grab a bottle of wine, uh, and just spend a, you know, a relaxing day in the country. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, Neshoba Valley Winery is open seven days a week uh, until five. We do tastings every weekday. We do tastings and tours on Saturdays and Sundays. Hope to see you soon. Hello, I'm Audrey Samick owner of Amherst Farm Winery, the newest farm winery in western Massachusetts. We produce 12 different fruit wines, six different grape wines here, two hard ciders, and four carbonated natural sodas. We purchased the farm in 2004. It's an old building farm barn that came out of the Quabbin Reservoir. It was a restaurant for a number of years and we purchased it and decided to make a lovely spot for a farm winery. Here at the winery, we offer a unique approach. You can actually watch us bottle the wine. First, we sparge the bottles to clean them of any debris, any dust or any um, sediment that might be in the bottles. Then we move them onto the filler where the bottles are uh, regulated to a certain height. They're filled. Then the, it'll move on to the corking machine where the cork is actually air driven into the bottle. From there, the bottles are topped with a heat shrink topping. From there, they go on to the labeling assembly line where each bottle, 24,000 bottles, are labeled by hand. It's a very time consuming process. It's a true labor of love. Here we have a sample of Amherst Farm Winery's wine. One of our most popular is the blueberry. We also do a wonderful cranberry wine, which is very popular, using local cranberries, local blueberries. We have a strawberry wine with local strawberries, and it's like summer in a glass, very refreshing. There are a number of lovely spots to enjoy a glass of wine at the winery. You can sit out here on the barrel patio overlooking the vineyard and enjoy a glass. We also have an upstairs a gallery loft where we will be featuring local artists each month uh, with a wine and cheese reception. Amherst Farm Winery is open seven days a week from 11 to 6 for tours and tastings. Hope to see you here soon. Hi, my name is Scott Ribello, and I'm the production manager for Salt Creek Vineyard. Uh, it's a 20-acre vineyard on a 130-acre farm. Uh, I've been maintaining for five years now. The vineyard itself has been here for 32 years and was established about the same time as most of the other vineyards in the local area. I have been working here for five years, but I actually started working here when I was 14 years old. I spent my February vacation here tying the, uh, the grapevines to the trellis 
and that was my first experience with grapes and ever since then I've had a passion for the grapes and the grape industry. You know I have a unique situation I have 20 acres of grapes uh, it's strictly agriculture there's no winery here so my focus is to create a great grape. Uh, any winemaker can make a, a good wine out of a bad grape but it takes a great grape to make a great wine and so being in agriculture like this and I'm also in horticulture to do this to create a good grape is is the best thing I can do for the industry from Massachusetts because um, anybody can grow a grape but not too many people can grow a really good one. So what makes this vineyard unique for Massachusetts especially but all of New England is that it's one of the largest vineyards that's strictly agriculture. There's no winery here the homeowner or the property owner expressed to me originally when we started the vineyard that she did not want a winery here. She just wanted it to stay a farm and stay agriculture. So it's a 130 acre farm. There's 32 acres of fields, 20 acres of grapes, and the rest are woods that go all the way down to a marsh that has trails, walking trails that are very beautiful at any time of year. So the vineyard itself is very unique because of that. Okay, this variety here is Vidal. This is a French hybrid. It's also a very aggressive grower. So we have to do several things to keep it in, in uh, check. We prune the tops. We also have to do some cluster thinning. When you get to a certain point in the season, you have clusters that aren't developed as much as the rest and they uh, need to be removed physically. Uh, cane thinning is also something that's done to reduce the grape load on the plant. Each plant has a certain number of canes growing on it. The canes should only take up four to six canes per foot. So you have to manually go through, count the canes, and remove extra canes to the point where you only have four to six per foot. This is done so that you have balanced pruning so that the plant produces the same amount of grapes every year. And that way it only takes up the same amount of nutrients every year. And uh, it will continue to produce grapes of the same quality every year. That's downy mildew. That's what happens on the bottom of the leaf. So when we have that situation, we'll come through and we'll trim off the excess. And this is called hedging. And that way the airflow is improved. The grapes are in a zone where the pesticides can reach them and uh, the load on the plant is reduced. The, uh, the other thing that some vineyards do is called leaf pulling and in the cluster zone they actually remove the leaves completely so that the spray can reach the clusters. In my situation there's too many vines here to be able to do that so I have to grin and bear it and just hope that the spray penetrates. So we do the hedging so that the, the uh, grapes can get the spray, but uh, it also helps in removing some of the downy mildew that's built up on the leaves. Okay, so one of the, uh, the difficult parts about New England and, and Massachusetts is the unpredictable weather in the winter. Cold temperatures are a factor. In most vineyards, the best way to grow a grape is to have one trunk. One vine has one trunk. In New England, we have to practice multi-trunks because if we get temperatures below five below zero, 10 below zero, the plants can actually die to the ground. So where we have three trunks here, we're hoping that one of them will, at least one of them will survive. And then the next year, if, uh, if there's a situation where they all survived, then we'll thin out the trunks and maybe we'll only leave two. This year we left three because one of them has some mechanical damage. But in typical situations, we would leave at least one or two for the year, but at the end of the year, we would have renewals coming from the bottom that would need to be pruned out, and then we would just allow these to grow as is. So last year we did 56 tons that went all over New England. About 50% goes down to Stonington, Connecticut, Stonington Vineyards. Uh, another 20% goes up north to New Hampshire. Uh, Newport Vineyards acquired about 10 tons last year. 
and then the rest goes all over New England, uh, a ton here, a ton there, 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds, it varies. But uh, all together, I have um, uh, about uh, 15 winemakers that uh, are all over New England that use the wine, or use the grapes. The history here has had three different production managers, including myself. And at this point, I expect to be here for a while, but the last production manager was here for almost 20 years. It's a, uh, it's a job you have to love, and I love it. <laughs> My name is Wayne Eline and I own, along with my family, Le Troisième Winery. This all started as a job to fill in my time in retirement. However, it has grown into something much bigger than that. Le Troisième, we really, my wife and I really wanted to name it the three M's for our three oldest granddaughters, Megan, Madison, and Mary Catherine. However, the three M make too much scotch tape and that was not going to do so well. So we asked a Frenchman how you might say that in French, and it came out Les Troisièmes. So our winery is Les Troisièmes. We started this whole process in 2003, and we were going to make a few bottles of wine, maybe four or 500 cases. And this year, we will be producing approximately 4,500 cases. So it's grown much bigger and larger than what we ever expected to. This is our tasting room at Les Troisièmes, and these are our wines, and we've named them after a lot of our grandchildren. We have a very dry white wine called a Céval Blanc. Cayuga White is one of our most popular wines. Uh, we grow it here, but we don't have enough room, so we do have six acres in the Finger Lakes that grows for us also. Nick Jackson Blush is a grandson. It's made up of Cayuga and a grape called Marshall Foch. This is not what we call a drinking grape, we call it a blending grape. So we blend it with the Cayuga, we back sweeten it, and we make a, a blush. Berkshire Red is a combination of several of our reds, and it's a kind of a dry Merlot type taste. This is our signature wine. It's called Stingy Jack Pumpkin Wine, and this year the International allowed a novelty wine in and we took a silver. It's trademarked. Nobody can make it but us. And again, you cannot make wine from pumpkin because there's no sugar in pumpkins. But what we do is we make it from Cayuga and we infuse it with pumpkin. So that's what we have here and that's what we serve. Here we are in the barrel room and another indicator of our growth that is taking place is the fact that the back of the barrel room is full of empty bottles like uh, our fermentation room. But you can see from the barrels that we do make a lot of wine. We have 42 barrels in here. And uh, although it is very difficult to grow grapes here, uh, the grapes that we do grow uh, from uh, the Finger Lakes and the, the grapes that we buy from out in the California area uh, supply us with enough grapes for us to make a lot of good red wine. And so these barrels are the vessels that help us produce that wine that we think is extraordinarily good for this area. Les Troisem Winery is located in the Berkshires in New Marlborough, Massachusetts. We're open from April through December. Come visit us sometime while you're in the Berkshires. Hi folks, I'm John Samick, one of the owners here at Hardwick Vineyard and Winery. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite everyone out to come visit our farm. We bought this farm in 1997 with a dream of starting a vineyard in a winery. We planted our first grapes in 1998. Uh, we became a licensed farm winery in 2002 and we're currently in our ninth year, excited going into our tenth year. So we bought this farm in 1997, uh, 150 acres total on the farm. Most of it was grown in, and most of it's woodland, but it was uh, about 40 acres that's actually tillable. 
but no one had farmed here since the 70s, so it was grown in all the fields here and all the vineyards were, were we had to bring back the fields, actually. A lot of the trees um, probably were grown four, five, six inches in caliber. And just removing them and removing some of the stone walls and opening it up and making it a, a, a usable uh, fields and vineyard is what we've been doing. So here, this variety here is a white variety. Um, it's the Cayuga white. We use this for blending with almost everything. Uh, our cranberry is our, our best-selling wine, and really our cranberry wine pays our bills, is what we say. And the cranberries are from Hardwick, too. The year we planted our first grapes in 98, another farmer who diversified sold his dairy herd and went on to um, other things, planted a cranberry bog right here in Hardwick. We have a total of six different wines that we sample every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Um, we welcome guests from 11 to 5 to come in and try our two reds, our two whites, our blush, and our Massets cranberry. It's mostly white grapes we get from our own vineyards as well as some other wineries in New England. We bring in some extra grapes. We also blend it with Steve Prouty's cranberries from the local cranberry bog here in Hardwick. It's a little sweet from the grapes, a little tart from the cranberries. Good for Thanksgiving with turkey, apple pie. Um, it's been our best seller since day one. Massets was the abbreviation for the house built back in 1795 that is here on the property with the winery. We do tour the vineyard and um, the house as well and you can go through it and sip your wine and go on a house tour. So it's, it's exciting to be in, in the wine industry and in agriculture. Uh, in Massachusetts, as we always have. We were born here, raised here, farmed our whole life here, and wanted to continue farming. A uh, little challenging here in central Massachusetts, growing grapes. Uh, the hybrids are working, they are growing, they're making a decent wine. We sell all our wine. Um, my daughter is full-time now, our son-in-law has come on full-time, and we just see nothing but growth for the, for the wine business here. Uh, in the wine industry in Massachusetts, and we're excited about that. So this is Hardwick Winery. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you soon. So welcome to Black Birch Vineyard in Southampton, Massachusetts. To my right is Ed. This is Mary, Ian, and I'm Michelle. Uh, we planted our first vines back last year in 2010 and we plan on opening our winery next year in 2012. We've been friends for about 10 years now and we hope to uh, grow together our friendship and uh, produce good wine and, and share it with everyone. Well, let's start in March 2010 when Ian, Michelle, Mary and I sat down for dinner in the house. Uh, they came over to watch American Idol. And, and there, I had some wine books on the kitchen table. And Ian says, what's this? And I says, well, I've been toying for a couple of years with doing something with wine and, and I was thinking about planting. And, and uh, I said, my problem is I have a hard time pulling the trigger these days. And Ian jumped up and he said, let's do it. Last fall, we put up about 12 different varieties of grapes in, in maybe 15 or 16 different styles. Uh, that's why you see so many of the, the different uh, uh, carboys and stainless containers uh, and we also have more in another room but uh, trying to source grapes experiment with grapes and see what kind of wine we can make uh, especially i think we we spent more time this past year working with the the hybrids and trying to figure out exactly how to make the wine and, and we're happy with our results you can see behind us here um, the uh, small, what we call carboys uh, containers, uh, even these smaller containers, 200 liters and 100 liters, um, we try to keep things small here um, with our um, uh, varieties. It allows us to spend more time. Um, it allows us to uh, think about each uh, type of wine and, and what needs to be done to get it right. This barn is what was a woodshed for the farm here, and um, it was a working farm up until probably the 19. 80s, maybe 90s, late 80s, I guess. And um, so this upper section we hadn't been using. We've been using the lower section just to store our cordwood, um, which we do heat with. And our greatest source of 
heat comes from black birch, which is where our part of where our name came from. Um, it's a post and beam construction that happened somewhere probably in the 1860s. Um, the house is from 1860. And um, so most of the structure is original. We did put a new floor down. Um, and we have an option to expand the tasting room a little bit wider if we need to in the future. And we hope that we do. Thanks for watching and come visit us soon at Black Birch Vineyards in Southampton, Massachusetts. Thank you.